The Youth Empowerment Program is one of the best programs I've actually been in in a long time. I've been through a lot of programs, you know, and none of them compared to this one. This is a one of a kind. It saves, like, it saves lives. It saves a lot of youth's lives. If you want a better life, if you want to live the way you want, like, a good, happy life, full of love and full of compassion, the Youth Empowerment Program is what you need to get into. Human potential. We see it in learning through the arts students like Jesse, and strive to develop it in all of our Learning Through the Arts partnerships. LTTA is celebrating its 20th birthday. 20 years ago, Dr. Peter Simon had a dream, and it was that more students could experience music and the arts to develop their human potential through learning through the arts. In our 20 years of experience, we've learned a few things along the way, and we'd like to share with you some of our insights. When I walk into a classroom where children are engaged in paper pencil activities, the majority of students look up and know that I've entered the room. But when I walk into a classroom where students are engaged in learning through the arts activities, they are truly engaged. They don't even know I'm there. Being an artist educator with LTTA has positively affected my life in so many ways. I think first and foremost, being in the classroom with students and teachers is inspiring and their unique ways of approaching music and creativity inform me in my own artistic practice. How to use music to explore science, social studies, math has made me see the world and my own art form in totally new and interconnected ways. And then there's the LTTA team. The managers have encouraged and supported me in developing my artist educator practice through personal mentorship, professional development, and the opportunity to work in a huge variety of settings. I've been challenged to look at the issues of equity and social justice through the lens of a learner and a leader. And I really feel I've been gifted with the chance to collaborate and learn from all of the talented and diverse artist educators on the roster. Being an artist with LTTA is a vibrant and integral part of my career. The mission of the Royal Conservatory to develop human potential through music and the arts is the driving force behind learning through the arts. In my view, there are no better people prepared to drive that mission as there are artists in the community across this country and around the world. Learning through the arts have given artists a paradigm, a structure, a scaffolding to use those amazing creative skills, the intelligence, the planning skills, the sequencing, the creativity, to partner with teachers and transform schools. What's been unique to this program over the last what's been unique to this program over the last 20 years is the partnership. And I see that strength of partnership between teacher, artist, community donors um, as the change agent, as the transformative power, how artists have found a place that they can call home, who have connected with one another and who have found this unique home and that to me is part of the legacy. In the last two decades, we've developed a rigorous practice of training artists. We've trained more than 2,000 artists. As we made links between the curriculum and the arts, we partnered with school districts across the country. The sustainability and of learning through the arts in Thunder Bay, it, it started off small with 11 classrooms and now has bloomed to over 100 classrooms. And also the malleability that um, the program allows for uh, different geographical locales and sites. We've grown outside of the school into the community. I think the 15 years being here has really planted the seeds and the roots are really anchored. We have so many community partners now, which is one thing that I believe we need to bring more of that into the schools. And that's what we're building here with our um, Ontario North site in Thunder Bay. When you look back at LTTA in the beginning, really wasn't, it was just school, teacher, artist. And now in my community, the partnerships are 
um, the Thunder Bay Art Gallery, Walking with Our Sisters, Ministry of Natural Resources, OPP, the Thunder Bay Police Department, Lakehead University. It's just growing and growing, and I love it. When we make connections in the community, we see it circle back into the classroom. We first met Isapaki, one of our elders in residence, at the Friendship Center in Fort McMurray. She was leading the smudge. Watching my son at, at two years old with snowshoes on, out on the trap line, where there was just snow and no, no tracks or anything. And he would tell me, Mom, I'm going to break trail for you I'll, I'll, and I'll make a trail for you so you can go down and, and uh, get water. Breaking trail with um, what I do for LTTA is for my younger people, bringing also more elders. We need everybody to come on this trail. Our culture our traditions, our language. We need to bring all that back and, and teach our grandchildren. Our Elder in Residence program helps us reach students, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, in Thunder Bay, Fort McMurray and Vancouver classrooms, breaking down stereotypes and exploring another way of knowing. Our qualitative and quantitative research has measured the impact of our work in the Wood Buffalo region. Learning through the arts is just the way school happens now. What is the big picture goal? Well, we know that the arts are at the heart of a competency-based practice. Today, so how can the arts inform an approach to teaching directions. and learning that has teachers, students, and community members working and learning alongside one another? It's something we've been working on through curriculum redesign. We're excited to be partnering with Learning Through the Arts to prototype a new vision for curriculum. Working together, our goal is for teachers to develop their own capacity within the arts, to broaden their pedagogical expertise, Lecture. It's, it's kind of getting their hands dirty with the curriculum um, and being able to, to tell the story visually and, and kind of how they see it and how they want to uh, portray it is again taking ownership in, in, in their learning and it, it's, been, it's been really rewarding. Innovation, like learning, begins with asking meaningful questions. As teachers strengthen their arts abilities, will that help them meet students in the digital media world? Do Aboriginal teaching traditions offer insight for teachers about how to work alongside their students? Can elders embrace digital technology as a way to pass precious traditions onto their youth? As we work with school boards and communities to answer these questions, we will help teachers extend their professional practice and learn another way of knowing their students. Their growing connection to the arts and to their communities help make the classroom a fun space to be every day, a place where the arts and learning live. The future offers many possibilities. Technology helps us to record our information for future generations. Technology helps us to stay connected. We need to connect with each other. And that's one way, if I can't travel north or they can't travel south, we can still be connected through um, 
the digital, through technology, through Skype, and it, it's important. Well, it's good because we get to, get to learn more about technology and art. Two of my most favorite things. This year, we're celebrating 20 years of learning through the arts. So many amazing people have been part of that journey. We thank you. We all believe in the power of arts and education. Together, we're finding new ways of working with students and teachers and community to develop human potential. That's something worth celebrating.